Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm for Classic and welcome to Benchart. So for today what I do have in it is Star Wars Squadrons, a game developed by Motive Studios. And they were also kind of involved with the Star Wars Battlefront 2, but this is their first main week game they have released alone without any help and they are using Frostbite 3 as you know it is the same engine behind Battlefield, FIFA and pretty much a lot of EA titles since this is their engine. Alright so I decided to take a run on the MX130 with 2GB GDDR5 which makes all the difference comparing to the DDR3 version. Now I'm using an i7 with turbo boost disabled and 16 gigs of RAM, I mean 32 gigs of RAM. But honestly, if you have 16 gigs of RAM at dual channel, you will have the same performance. All right, 32 gigs, it is not going to give you more performance than 16 on this game. So let's talk a little bit of the settings that I did use for this game and what you're actually seeing in here it is the game running at 720p using the low presets. The low preset it isn't really necessarily the minimum settings possible which means that you can go lower than that but the wall settings looks also pretty good in my own opinion and honestly for this game the graphics doesn't really matter the most because this is a dogfighter so let me show you the settings very quickly so as you can see 720p and i'm using the low presets the only thing that is not entirely low it is the screen space shadows so looking to the requirements these guys ask an hd 7850 or a geforce a gtx 660 our MX-130, I believe it is weaker than the GTX 660. And for the CPU, it, they do recommend a Ryzen 3 or an i5 from the 6000 generation. And obviously a gigs of RAM. So I decided to take, uh, I decided to try a lot of performance uh, presets in here. So at 720p, the low settings provided an experience overall above 60 frames per second. There were a drop here and there, but most of the game were above 60 frames per second. Median settings was pretty much between uh, above the 45, high settings above the 37, and ultra settings above the 30. At 900p, the median settings was above the 30 frames per second, and the high settings you started to notice some drops below. Uh, 30. So my own recommendation for this game, since this game have a very very competitive multiplayer game uh, inside of it, my recommendation it is to stick the game above 60 frames per second as much as possible. So the only frame rate that gives us that it is really to go with 720p low settings. And honestly, as you will see on this video, the low settings on this game actually looks pretty good, none of the less. I don't notice big big difference in visuals between uh, each preset, of course the differences are there, but what I'm trying to say is that the low settings for this game, it does, looks, it does look pretty good and offers a very very nice performance. So uh, for this video I will be showing just a gameplay of dogfighting, so it's essentially it's a, just 5 against 5 trying to get the best kills or the most kills the the team with most kills will win it is essentially just that there is one issue with the performance of this game that is already identified and you can actually notice on this video there are uh, a lot of stuttering uh, gameplay you can notice that uh, some stuttering happening this issue have been identified already by some youtubers and it seems that using VSync on, which is usually something that you don't use on competitive games, um, enables much more stability on frames for this game. So I'm pretty sure EA Games will be working on a patch to fix this because people with uh, high refresh screens like 120 Hz, even using VSync, are having issues. It seems that this game only runs fine when it is locked to 60 frames per second with VSync. But this issue, it is a release date issue, which means that they will essentially. I'm going. I'm going to guess that they will fix this as soon as possible, and. Possibly, if you are going to buy the game in 5 days or 7 days, this issue will be solved already. Alright, so that's all about the performance. It runs great, mostly above 60 frames per second at low setting, 720p, which means that you can play just fine. And this stuttering issue, I'm pretty sure it's going to be solved anyway. 
So as for the game itself, this is an EA game, all right, and probably it is full of microtransactions, right? Well, in fact, it is not. That's the that's the surprising part. EA games have been known for all these years because of having multiple microtransactions on Star Wars games and stuff like that. And in fact, at least at the moment of this video, there is no microtransaction. I wouldn't be shocked if they added microtransactions along the line, like in some a couple of months or something. I wouldn't be surprised, and that thing would be a very, very bad move for the EA, but I wouldn't be surprised since they are kind of the, those type of guys that do that. But still, at the moment, no microtransactions, all the stuff that you unlock, skins and uh, uh, I would say probably perks, uh, stuff that you unlock are all unlocked by playing the game and not by paying more for the game, which is something <laughs> really strange for the EA games, but very that's very nice. Also, the game it doesn't it doesn't really have a full price um, launch, so instead of costing like fifty dollars or sixty dollars, uh, it costs forty dollars. If you live in Europe, it is forty euros. So I think it's a it's a nice price indeed. And also, despite this game have multiplayer, uh, which it is what I'm using in here, I'm using the regular dogfight, which is pretty much 5 against 5. Um, there is still a, a fleet thing, where you need to destroy um, the fleet um, ship of the enemy, and the enemy needs to, sh to destroy your fleet ship, uh, ship I mean. Uh, there is also a story mode. Uh, which some of the people on Steam really say it is a little bit boring, doesn't really add anything, then that the AI it is dumb as hell. But still, there is a story mode which should take up for you to, to you know, to have gameplay of 7 to 10 hours. So, I'm using gamepad in here, not all the people um, are really keen to play with a gamepad on these games. Some people do recommend mouse and keyboard, some other people say that it is impossible to play with mouse and keyboard. I myself had a little bit trouble to uh, get adapt to play with uh, the gamepad. I had to make uh, a lot of changes on the, the key, mappings, um, key mappings of the game. The good thing is that it allowed me to select every stuff, every key of the gamepad. Not all the games uh, let you customize that, but it does allow to customize that. So, it is fine, just play the way that you want. Uh, it would be great. Uh, this game has a lot of different levels of uh, difficulty. Uh, so you can select and adjust, but it can be a little bit tough. So this game have a, a lot of ships which you can select. They work as uh, squads, uh, squads, not classes, I mean. So each ship have its own abilities or speed or resistance or power. Uh, so it's a little bit like classes on Battlefield. So each one have its own ability or perk. The same thing goes to this game, but for the, the ships or, the you know, this. Uh, each one also you can customize the way that you drive the ships for example you can bump up more speed into the ship in the middle of the fight as well as uh, um, enable more resistance like a, a shield or something to prevent uh, from receiving too much damage but when you choose each type of stuff on fly you are kind of uh, getting also these advantages. For example, when you select speed, you don't have enough resistance. Uh, when you select like uh, uh, resistance, you don't get enough speed. Your uh, your ship gets hard to control. You can customize every stuff in on fly by pressing uh, some sort of keys. Um, there are lock on uh, attacks which acts as as missiles. You also have the flares to disperse the missiles. And yeah, it's it's a quite interesting game, and so far what I have tried, it worked pretty well. So despite the Steam reception, it is not being great, because not all the people are satisfied with the game. The complaints are mostly, are mostly relatable with uh, the map, some maps are too empty, uh, some other people complain about balance. I'm not really so sure about that, but about the maps, I have to agree. There are maps that doesn't have anything. This one that I'm playing in here at the moment, it is amazing. It is a nice map where you need to perform awesome maneuvers. It's a very interesting map, but many other maps are just nothing at all. It's just an empty space with a skybox and nothing at all.
to offer all right so yeah, i have to agree on that but apart from that i think the game works pretty great and the critics have been giving this game the score of 81 so i would say that it is perfectly fine and if you enjoy star wars and dog fighting style this game it is completely mandatory for you all right guys so guys i think that's all that i want to talk about star wars squadrons hope you keep enjoying the rest of the video and i do hope to see you soon goodbye